Please stand as we sing together hymn 180 found in your blue hymnal.
welcome to Emmanuel on this glorious Sunday morning. Our service continues on page one of your service booklet. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. And now let us sing together Psalm 4, found on page 4. Thank you. 
A reading from the book of 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is, and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing together hymn 193. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, Here, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Please pray with me. Lord God, thank you for the gift and blessing of this day, for the beauty of your creation, Lord God, but especially for the beauty of being able to worship you together. Lord, what a gift and what a privilege we enjoy that we can sit with and um, lift our voices with people who share this same faith with us. And we pray, Lord God, that you would unite us, unite us as a believing community, unite us as brothers and sisters in Christ, and fill us with the, the power of your presence. Lord God, and, and help me to preach today faithfully. Uh, give me your words and give me your spirit that, that I might um, dutifully um, carry out this call you have placed on my heart. And we pray that you would bless us with an ever-growing faith in you. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Morning, everybody. Morning. It's so great to see you all, and thank you so much for being here. Now, um, I don't know about you, but it seems like in this world, it's, it's hard to navigate um, and make decisions about things when there's so much information coming at us. Right? So many things that are presented to us which demand a choice. Right, We have to choose whether we'll believe it or not, whether we'll accept it or not, deny it or not, whether it's true or false. Right, Like, if you are presented with the option of, of the opportunity to eat a Tide Pod, you know those little laundry detergent things? Would you eat one of those? How do you know? Why? Oh. Yeah, reverse, right? I mean, you, uh, it doesn't take much to... But, nevertheless, people have eaten these things, right? They've done that, right? They've been presented with the opportunity to do it, and they've done it because they've seen it as like a challenge, right, online. Right? Um, vegetables. Should we eat those things? How do you know? Your mother said so, that's right. And your mother probably said don't eat Tide Pods either, too. That'd be helpful, right? We do this all the time. We have to discern between good and bad, right and wrong, what we should do. Those are some pretty simple choices on some level, although none of us eat as much vegetables as we ought to. Um, the challenge is, is when it gets into things that, that demand more research and more understanding, right? Sometimes we have options presented to us which seem beyond our capacity to discern easily, right? Somebody presents me a Tide Pod on a plate, I'm not eating that thing, it looks gross, right? But if I have a choice about something else that I'm just not sure of, how am I going to choose? How am I going to know? Well, there's a recent article from the BBC which talks about um, the research of two Danish researchers. That's, I have a life goal to be a Danish researcher, right? Like cheese-filled Danish or like cherry Danish or, man, I could do some Danish research. I'll tell you that right now. So these guys are, um, these guys with the best job in the world are Vincent Hendricks and Pell Hansen. And they say, when you don't, it's a long quote, so stick with me here. When you don't possess sufficient information to solve a given problem, or if you just don't want to or have the time for processing it, then it can be rational to imitate others by way of social proof. The article explains what they're saying. It says, when we either know very little about something or the information surrounding it is overwhelming, it makes sense to look to others' apparent beliefs as an indication of what is going on. In fact, it is often the most reasonable response, so long as we have good reason to believe that others have access to accurate information, and that what they seem to think and what they actually believe are the same. Okay, do you stick with me through that? Right, this is why our moms warned us to choose our friends right. wisely, right? right? Yes, you want to be hanging out with people who make good decisions because the human inclination is, is when presented with something that might take more research than we're interested in doing or might demand more information than we have on hand, we're likely just to do kind of what everyone else is doing. Right? You felt this in your life, I'm sure, once or twice, where you've made a decision just kind of based on what everyone else is doing. 
Um, it's why groups are so, so important to choose a group which is faithful, a group which makes wise decisions, because otherwise we can end up in a place we had no intention of going to initially. Our beliefs and our doubts are often shaped by our community. And let's see how this works itself out in our passage for today. Um, we are in the Gospel of Luke. Um, we're in a really exciting part of the Gospel of Luke. Um, Luke is all really exciting, but this is particularly thrilling. Jesus has been resurrected from the dead, and people are having these encounters with, them, with him which are profound. The Road to Emmaus passage has just preceded our passage. Um, where those two disciples were walking on the road to Emmaus when this person joined them, the stranger joined them, and their hearts are burning within them as the stranger is talking about how Jesus fulfilled the scriptures. And then they sit down to eat together, and it's in the breaking of the bread that they realize that the stranger is Jesus, Jesus right? Good church answer. I'm glad you all got that one right. <laughs> Right? It's like the Sunday school teacher who tells a story. Like, oh, I was driving in the Sunday school today, and, and this gray furry thing ran out of a tree, ran across the road, and I almost ran it over in my car. Then it ran up another tree and was chittering at me. And this teacher says, do you know what it was? And the kid said, well, it sounds like a squirrel, but it's probably Jesus. <laughs> right? Since we're in church. Right? So that's the answer. So you got the church answer. Jesus. Right, always come back with Jesus, you'll almost never be wrong. Okay, so they realize that it's Jesus, and at that, their plans of staying on this inn are canceled. They leave and they run back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples what they've seen, what they've experienced. And they've just finished telling them this. They've just finished telling them about their encounter with Jesus. And then Jesus appears like a character in a 1980s ninja movie, just right there, boom, in the middle of the room, probably with a puff of smoke and some sparks, but there is Jesus among them suddenly. And they're terrified. And so Jesus begins, he greets them with a benediction. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, um, this seems like a simple thing to say, like good morning or whatever, um, but Peace be with you, especially when Jesus is saying it. It's a profound statement. That's exactly what those disciples needed. They were frazzled. They were scared. They were confined to that room because they were terrified of the Romans. Um, they were not feeling peace at all. And then they'd been hearing stories about Jesus being alive, and they just didn't know what to believe. They were uncertain, and Jesus speaks to them peace. And when Jesus speaks peace, he backs it up with the peace that he himself brings. So obviously, um, the message at this point from those two disciples on the road to Emmaus had not had time yet to sink into the disciples' consciousness. They just had not internalized it. And they're not prepared to actually see Jesus. So when he shows up, they're startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. That's right, a ghost. Jesus wants to know why they're afraid. And so he says to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? He could have just as easily said, who are you going to call? Right? <laughs> and he, it wouldn't have been Ghostbusters, it would have been Jesus, right? <laughs> call for Jesus when you're afraid. That would have worked perfectly, but he didn't. Instead, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? God is incredibly gracious and kind and often very patient with, with people who doubt, with us when we struggle with our doubt. But he, at times he does chastise us for not trusting too, right? Because um, he wants us to eventually land on truth. He doesn't want us always hovering above things, looking at them, uncertain about whether we'll trust them or not. He wants us to settle on him. Why didn't you believe, he's asking them. What does it take for you to believe the testimony of these two disciples who saw me on the road to Emmaus and the testimony of the women who saw him at the empty tomb? Right? What will it take for the, peop for the disciples to believe? And so in order to show them that he's not a ghost, Jesus says, look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. 
Now here we get a window into first century superstitions, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, they're wacky just like us, is what this tells us. Uh, and they probably also watched paranormal ghost hunter TV shows as well, right? It probably was something that was on then. Jesus wants them to believe, and so he offers them proof that he is alive and present with them. He can be touched. He is not a ghost. Then he gives them the ultimate proof. We also, and in it, we see uh, the reason for their lack of belief. It's not pain, distrust, hard-heartedness. Instead, at this point in the account, it's transformed into joy. Joy is the reason why they're having a hard time believing that it's him. They are just too excited. It's kind of like those videos you see on the internet with like um, when parents give a little kid a puppy they've wanted for years, right? And the kid's like, oh my gosh, I love it, it's a man. You know, and they're freaking out, they can't believe it. Or, or the engagement videos where like, you know, down on one knee and, and the, the, she's like, oh, I love it. <laughs> right? Nobody's sure, you know those ones? Do you watch these things too or is it just me? <laughs> right? It's not just me. There's like millions of people who watch these, and I've not watched them that many times, right? <laughs> yep. No, it's all of us, right? It's an overwhelming thing. That you know that feeling of being so overwhelmed with something that's so amazing that it's almost unbelievable. That's what we have going on here. Um, while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? and eat something, a piece of broiled fish. And then with that proof of life completed, he can get on with what he actually wants to tell them because eating fish was not the point of his visit, right? He says, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. He's talking about pre-crucifixion. Back when I was walking around with you and teaching you all the time and kept telling you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled, I want to remind you that I've said this all before. Jesus wants them to understand that his death and resurrection are a fulfillment of prophecy, that this is a completion of an ordained plan which had been told them while he was still alive. Jesus had let them know what was going to happen, step by step. And because of that, what had happened to him was not the result of collusion between Romans and Jewish leadership. It was not that the world had victory over God. No, it was the result of the ordained plan of God coming to fulfillment. This had to happen. And he continues, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin, sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Then in what surely would be depicted as a montage if this were brought to film, we see Jesus opening their minds to understand the scriptures and their meaning. The disciples were probably going back in their memories and remembering those moments when Jesus had told him the, them these things and putting them all together. This had been a real roadblock, not only for the disciples, but for so many people who considered following Jesus but were uncertain about him. They had thought the Messiah meant that, that um, he would be a conquering hero, a political leader, that he would bring victory of the Romans. And when Jesus didn't do it, they thought there's no way this could be the Messiah. But instead, Jesus had been the Messiah in a very different, but nonetheless very biblical way. He had fulfilled the scriptures. Their understanding had been limited by their capacity to imagine something much greater than a pure political leader. And then he teaches them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. In fulfillment of the scriptures, Jesus had to suffer, rise from the dead on the third day, and then repentance of forgiveness of sins was to be proclaimed to all the nations, starting in Jerusalem. 
Jesus reiterates the plan of salvation, the way he carried out that plan, and then he issues a challenge to the disciples. You are witnesses of this. You are now to go out, starting in Jerusalem and going to all the nations, proclaiming salvation in Christ. They were to share the word so that this message didn't end with just them gathered in a room in Jerusalem, but continued and was able to impact the lives of countless people in this world. Now, doubt sometimes freezes us uncertainty about how to decide what to do in a situation, sometimes causes us to make no decision at all, to, to hover over instead of to land. Jesus here challenges the disciples to believe, to trust, and to hold fast to it. He does, he mildly chastises them, but I think on some level he was probably thrilled that their doubt was because of their overwhelming joy. He, these disciples aren't the only ones who respond to Jesus like this. There's another great example in the scriptures, and that's from the Samaritan woman at the well. Remember, Jesus meets her and says, like, I'll give you living water. The woman left her water jar and went back to the city, and she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? You see this joy, this hope, this desire, and yet within it, a, a little bit of doubt. We live in a world where there's so much information coming at us so quickly every piece of it demanding a decision on our part. But really, when it comes down to it, there's only one question that we need to answer, and that's this question about Jesus. Is he who he says he is? You and I, we're part of a community of faith which affirms that this is true, that he is the Savior of the world. Now, how do you know that this community is accurate in its assertion? Well, now we'll move into the bulk of my sermon. That was all introduction. <laughs> and so you guys don't have plans this afternoon, do you? I hope you all got the email that it was going to be a long what? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we don't have time to get into all the proofs of this claim today, but there are proofs that we can look at. Another way to look at whether something is true is to see what the, the group is doing with that knowledge, right? What is it doing? Is it changing the group for the better? Is it transforming hearts and minds? Is it freeing people from pain or loss or grief or, or shame? Are there signs that reveal that the church is following the truth? Well, yeah, there are. Right? That we're told that, that um, the world will know that we are Christians by our love for one another. And so this church seeks to love one another. Do we do it perfectly all the time? No. What happens when we don't? What should happen when we don't? Repent. We should confess. And in so doing, in confessing that we fall short, we are revealing the gospel. A church that always just defends itself and says, oh, I didn't mess up. No, no, that couldn't be me. That's not showing the gospel at all, and that's, that's not great, that message that's being shared. Instead, the message that Jesus Christ challenges us to share is one that says, I have fallen short of the glory of God. I am sorry that I, that I hurt you or that I did the wrong thing. Please forgive me. That's a message that leads to an understanding of what grace is. Grace is not that you and I come to church perfect every Sunday. Grace is that we come to church and we are washed clean by the grace of God, his mercy and forgiveness. That's what this church should be living out. That's what we're challenged to do, to, show, to live out the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. We also don't do this alone. Because you and I, we could go on the wrong direction. I mean, it's not hard for churches to be, get misguided, right? We need to allow ourselves to be open to the correction of the Spirit, to God coming in and saying, you know what? Things need to change. 
And so for us, um, we as a community should always be open to the work of God in our lives, to him chastising us, challenging us, blessing us, leading us. And in so doing, we can reveal the truth of the message that we proclaim. By the grace of God, may he make this possible for us. Let's pray. Lord God, it's so important for us to, to land in a group which will lead us to faith, to a deepening love for you, and to a living it out in this world and a proclaiming of your good news. Lord God, make this church a place like that. Help us to be people who are humble, who are loving and gracious and kind. And Lord God, send us out into the world faithfully and boldly, but also humbly, knowing that it's not because of our own righteousness or our own faithfulness that we have received your grace and mercy, but because of what you have done on our behalf. And Lord God, we pray that you would help us to walk in love with one another and so reveal that you are here, that you are present, and that you are true, and the gospel is believable. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 6. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, particularly those on our parish prayer list and those on the Daughters of the King prayer list. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. 
Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Pass it around. Uh, when you've passed your piece, uh, feel free to have a seat. It is so splendid to see you all this morning. If you are new to the church, we are just so thrilled that you're here. Um, if you are new, if you could take a, mem a moment to fill out a visitor card, they can be found in the pew in front of you, and then drop it in the offering plate as it passes by. We'd sure appreciate that. Uh, there's a few things we want to highlight in our announcements. One is uh, that we have coming up the crab feed. Today is the last day to buy tickets. So um, tickets are available next door. Um, you can pay by cash, check, or credit card, or cell phone if you have Apple Pay or Google Pay too. Um, we have entered into the 21st century. Yes, I know. It might take us a little while to figure it out, but it is possible to do it like that. It is best, though, cash or check are best because um, there's, there's a small processing fee that we incur uh, if you pay by card, but that's okay. We're happy to take it, no matter how it works. Um, all right, uh, we have also coming up our Fearless Faith, Faith, Re Fearless Faith and Fearless Faith Revival um, coming up in uh, Roseville in a couple months. So we'd love for you. What are the dates? Do you remember off the top of your head? What is that? Oh, it's April. Yeah, it's not a couple months, a couple weeks. Yeah. What is Fearless Faith? Fearless, it's going to be like a big tent revival what? happening down in Roseville. We what want to have a crew. Or everybody? What's that? Is it all Episcopalians? Anybody can come. I mean, Episcopalians are leading it, but anybody can come. Yeah, bring all, bring all your friends. So it'll be taking place down in Roseville. There's some great speakers, and it'll be a great opportunity for us to um, have our faith renewed and to hope God willing to see a revival take place. Uh, 27. 27th, so, yep, Saturday, two weeks from now. 
Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, there's also, um, the date is on here, but we're going to be having an informational meeting about the um, pilgrimage to St. Paul's Missionary Journeys, the Greece and Turkey pilgrimage will be going on in 2025. If you're interested in knowing more about it, uh, on the 23rd at 5.30 p.m. in Bacal, we'll be having uh, a meeting um, to talk about it. So, okay, are there any birthdays or anniversaries we can pray for you? All right, Miss Barbara, birthday? Uh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Happy birthday to you. And Dee Dee? Well, I just want to give thanks for Solana, little Solana's day of birth and future birthdays. Okay. She's almost a month old. Selena, your granddaughter in South Africa. Yeah. Okay, we will definitely pray for her. And you're leaving tomorrow. I'm leaving Flying. tomorrow from the plane, and we're driving to the airport hotel tonight. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, let's pray. <laughs> Lord God, we thank you for your daughters. Thank you for the gift and blessing that they are to us. Pray that you would be with them, fill them with your power, your mercy, your grace, and your love. We pray, Lord God, that um, you would bless Dee Dee's trip to South Africa, and may it just be a wonderful time with Lily and Selena. And we pray that you would uh, help us all to faithfully serve you in this year to come, Lord God. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to you. God bless you. Okay, kids, you want to do the box today? Box, box. Okay. Stay. Dun, dun, dun. All right, who's going to open it? You? All right, let's do it. Get it. That was very theatrical. I like that spin. Okay, what do you see? Ooh. Okay. What he has pulled out is a, show it to the congregation, like a gecko light. Ooh, yeah. So we just need to get from a gecko light to Jesus. That's, yeah, gecko light to Jesus. How are we going to do that? Okay, well, we can go, we can go with... Um, Jesus lights our way. Yeah, we can go with the theme of light. Jesus lights our way. Um, geckos also are kind of like everywhere, right? When you're in a place where geckos are, they, you'll find them kind of everywhere. Kind of like the Holy Spirit is always with us. The gecko is always there watching. Geckos kind of change color too, don't they? Not as much as a chameleon, but they do do some color change, right? So you could say like the gospel is always going to other cultures and finding ways to translate into them. What do you think? What's your view on gecko? He, he thinks it's going to be cool when it's dark tonight. When it's dark. Yes, it is. <laughs> what do you think? Any other gecko ideas? We could go with car insurance. <laughs> right? The Geico gecko? Yeah, no. That one, no. That, okay, we're not buying that one. All right. Yeah. Which one sounds best to you? Probably the light one. The light one. Yeah. Thanks, Rod. Light of the world. <laughs> yeah, the light of the world, right? Now you've got, like, there's big lights, right? We've got the lights above us here. If you go outside, we have the sun that's really bright. Um, now you have this little light with you. And that's what each of us as Christians have when Jesus is in our heart, is, is this light with us always. Right? I think that has a little clip on the tail, too. So it can, is that? Yeah, so you can clip it on your belt loop and have it with you all the time, right? Or on your keychain. Um, and that's, that's how Jesus is. He's with us always, lighting our way, with us in the dark places. Sound good? Is that going to work? Okay, let's pray. Lord God, uh, thank you for being the light who is always with us. We pray that you would um, lead us in the darkness, Lord, and help us to always walk in the light, to be people who, who don't go off on our own and get lost, but rather stay with you. And help us, Lord, to stay as a community, uh, that our lights all might be combined and so reflect your glory and your love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir.
All right, well, we now come to the part of the service where we are invited to the Lord's table. And it's kind of interesting um, because in the gospel passage, we see Jesus want to eat the fish to reveal that he is alive, right? So he asked for food to show that he, he is physically present with them. Um, we now come to a meal where we eat the food, and in so doing, and this food is Jesus, in so doing, it is revealed to us the truth, the reality, and the hope that God fills us and transforms us. So let us come to this table today eager to meet Jesus, eager to be filled with his presence, and to have our lives transformed by his grace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise. Please stand. service continues on page 10. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Stand or kneel as able. Holy and gracious Father, 
In your infinite love, you made us for you yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Take them in remembrance of the 
can be found on page 14. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. And now let us stand and sing hymn 492. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.